The contract for the engineering, procurement and construction of the Guyana Integrated Natural Gas Liquid Plant and the 300 megawatt electrical power plant was signed between the government of Guyana and the U.S.-based Integrated Energy Solutions Group in partnership with the local firm CH4 Group at the office of the president on Tuesday. It forms part of a wider gas to shore project promising the delivery of cheaper electricity and large amounts of cooking gas to Guyanese. I'm joined by Vice President Dr. Barajak, your Prime Minister Mark Phillips and Natural Resources Minister Vikram Bharat. President Irfan Ali said even with the Amila Falls hydropower project stalled, there was no abandoning of efforts to ensure the generation of hydropower. This is just one, one aspect of the project cycle. On the critical part, we have to now ensure that everything stays on that critical part in accomplishing the timelines, importantly, but also in ensuring that the benefit derived from this project comes to the people within the time frame. And that is what is critical. This project is not only about generation of power and liquids, and I'm not, I don't want to go into that now because I'm sure understanding the opportunities that this project will unlock for us as a country is just enormous. The initial gas to shore project was pegged at $900 million. But after successful negotiations, the government managed to secure a reduced cost of US $759 million for the plants at Wales, West Bank, the Marara. President Ali said Vice President Jack Dio was instrumental in finalizing what is the largest contract to be pursued by the government in just two years and also thanked ExxonMobil and the U.S. Embassy in Georgetown for their assistance. U.S. Ambassador Sarah Ann Lynch delivered brief remarks, noting she was impressed by the local willingness to provide the best possible engineering solutions while being attentive to the request of the government. She boasted that the U.S.-based company had a global reputation for delivering a high-quality infrastructure of this nature. The companies in this consortium have an excellent track record of delivering projects in other countries, and we are just thrilled to have them now in Guyana. My hope is that lowering the cost of electricity and improving its reliability will enable growth in manufacturing, add value to agricultural products, and allow for serious advances in every sector, in every region in Guyana. The project was signed by Permanent Secretary Derek Cummings and representatives of the U.S. base and local companies. Meanwhile, Vice President Jack Dio also attested to adherence to the highest international standards for the procurement, engineering, tendering and devaluation of the project. He said the government was keen in sticking to timelines, promised quality of work and staying within budget. According to the Vice President, in addition to fulfilling a manifesto promise to deliver cheap electricity to Guyanese, the project is also consistent with the country's low-carbon approach. We had to get this right, and we believe with this contractor, with Linsaker CH4 combination, that they will um, deliver on the project. Timelines are important for us. Um, the quality of the work is important and staying within budget. These are three things that we will look for and monitor carefully. Based on the country's revised low-carbon development strategy, Guyana will phase out the use of about 70% of non-renewable fossil fuels by 2027 through an energy mix of natural gas and renewable energy sources. These ambitious goals are national priorities, but the project itself impacts thousands of people directly. Natural gas, though a fossil fuel itself, is generally believed to be a lower emission fuel, setting up the needed pipeline natural gas liquids plant and the power generation plant is expected to be a feasible venture. The Amila Falls hydropower project is still being pursued with the government steadfast on the project's development model, despite the preferred contractor being unable to fund the project in that manner. Another integral component in the government's energy mix is the countrywide solar power network. Altogether, these projects should meet the tripled electricity demand in about four years' time. For the newsroom, Kurt Campbell.